My husband called me from Japan. My parents and I have fallen in love with Japan. A vacation home? Well, whatever it's called, we bought it. You bought it? I have no idea what he's talking about. A vacation home in the US, sure. But a vacation home in Japan? I don't know what they are thinking. Has my husband lost his mind since he reached retirement age? My name is Olivia. I'm 52 years old. I work for a brokerage firm. I have loved money since I was a little girl. Watching the balance in my bank account grow little by little is a moment of bliss. When I tell my friends how much I love money, I get a lot of stares from them. Even as an adult, my love of saving has not changed, and I have been steadily saving money while working. I have increased my savings by occasionally investing them. Of course, there have been some failures, but I'm proud to say that I have been able to steadily build up my assets. My husband Lucas is a government employee. He is a careless with money, but he's not the type to waste it. Since we got married, we have been gradually putting our spare money together. We have been investing our money together in a share account. Finally, we reached the $1 million that I had always dreamed of. I'm so happy that I could really achieve it. As I rejoiced that my dream had come true, my husband said to me, Your dream was not to buy luxury items or to go on a vacation. It was just to your saving goal. He said this looking dumbfounded. I could not have achieved this on my own. I said expressing my gratitude. This year, my husband who is 8 years older than me reached retirement age. We have $1 million in savings to ensure prosperous retirement. I really wanted to achieve it before my husband's retirement. Thanks to this, my husband's retirement money will be his reward for all the hard work he has done. He can spend it as he likes. My husband has worked diligently and hard for many years. From now on, I'd like him to take a little time out of his schedule and challenge himself to do something he hasn't done in the past. My husband was also thinking of taking the plunge and doing a variety of things after retirement. He decided to take his parents on a trip to Japan to repay them for their help in raising our children. That's great! Your parents will be very happy. They helped me a lot when our kids were young. It's a good chance to repay the favor. Can you take me and my parents with you? I asked him. No, you have a job to do. I'm sure your parents have to tend the garden too. He dismissed me with a tone that made light fun of my parents' family who are farmers. To be honest, my husband doesn't think well of my parents who are farmers in the countryside. It has been like this since the time we got married, so there is nothing I can do about it now. He has always liked to make fun of my own parents. Since my husband refused to take us on the trip, I ended up staying at home. Well, I suddenly have to work, so it was tough to take a 10-day vacation. Unfortunately, I gave up this time. Excluding our honeymoon, this trip to Japan will be my husband's first trip abroad. For my parents-in-law, this would be their first trip abroad. The three of them were so excited right from the preparation stage of the trip. They were asking what to bring what the dress code for dinner would be, and so on on the phone. I spent my time as usual, thinking how envious I was that they were having so much fun. I feel like I'm being left out of the group, and I'm starting to feel a little sad. My husband and his parents are staying in luxury hotel suites as recommended by the travel agency. They are also going on a cruise that will take them on a tour of Japanese culture. I'm wondering how much the total will be. I told my husband he could spend his retirement money however he wanted. I thought to myself by trying to calm down. But when I heard their happy voices on the phone every night, I couldn't help 
but feel like saying a sarcastic remark to them. I try to remain calm. I don't want to get into a fight before they leave. And the day finally came for them to depart. I took the three of them to the airport. I was asked to drive them there like it was the obvious thing to do. I asked them why they don't take a taxi, and then, You have no kindness for my parents. That's terrible, is what Lucas said to me. So I ended up dropping them off at the airport. I told them I couldn't take them because I had to work. I was a bit mortified that they would make me take time off work to pick them up and drop them off. On the way there, contrary to the three of them who were excited to leave, I felt more and more alone. My husband did not notice at all. When we arrived at the airport, I helped my parents in law with their luggage and check in. Finally, I was able to see them off. I was relieved to think that I would be able to live quietly for a while. They arrived in Japan safely and sent me a happy report with pictures. Their hotel room was luxurious, with a view of Kyoto Daimon's characters in front of it, a living room, and even a dining room. I wonder how much it cost per night. As I was reading the report with some anger, they asked me, Did you see the pictures? Isn't it a great room? My husband called me up with pride, so I said, How much money are you going to spend? Are you getting carried away? My husband was instantly in a bad mood. It's my money. I can do what I want. I'm having fun, and you are interrupting it by talking nonsense. Read the atmosphere. He hung up the phone, and I never heard from him again. Ten days later, my husband and in laws returned home after the trip as planned. I picked them up at the airport. They didn't like the fact that I waited for them in a temporary parking space instead of at the arrival gate. All three of them did not speak at all in the car. What is this? I had to adjust my work schedule to come and pick them up. But this attitude, it makes me angry. I'm not their chauffeur. I drove on, frustrated. When I got home, my husband's complaints started again. What the hell do you think you're doing? You lowered my spirits during the trip by saying stupid things. You didn't even pick us up properly. Don't get carried away. What? You're the one who is carried away. I did come pick you up. Why do I have to park the car and go to the arrival gate? You're not a child. Don't be ridiculous. I'm just soaking up the feeling of accomplishment after all the work I have done. I'm worried about my future if my wife doesn't have a shred of respect for me. With these words, my husband retreated to his room. What? Why is it my fault? What do you mean the future? I'm the one who should be worried. I was so angry that I couldn't sleep at night for a while after that. And I couldn't get any work done. So, after two weeks of not talking to my husband, he said, I'm going to Japan tomorrow, so please take me to the airport in the morning. What? Japan? Tomorrow? My husband is leaving for Japan with my in laws, and I was confused. He had just returned from Japan the other day, and now is going to Japan again. And my in laws are accompanying him again. I have nothing but questions about my husband's mysterious behavior. And they use me as a driver again. My in laws did not even say thank you. How in the world am I being treated? I want to go to Japan too, and I want to take my parents with me. From the very beginning of our marriage, my husband has not thought well of my parents who live in the countryside. When he came to my parents' house to meet them, my husband, who grew up in the city, was surprised at how old the house was. On the way home after receiving my family's blessing to marry, he said to me, I saw your mother's sunburned face. Unbelievable, he said. His mother is a city madam who is passionate about beauty and never misses a beauty salon 
for a beauty treatment appointment. I was sad my mother was compared with such a person since my mother worked so hard. You should get her to look a little nicer for the wedding. My husband said, and I remember taking her to beauty salons and beauty parlors in a hurry. I'm glad that my mother was so happy to be treated like a princess. But then I remember the bad times. My husband speaks ill of my mother, but I think that my husband's parents are also very arrogant. I can't really say that to them though. Every year since we got married, we have invited my in laws to dinner on Mother's Day, Father's Day, and birthdays. At first, they were grateful, but now, they request what they want to eat without any hesitation. In addition to that, this trip to Japan. I wanted to have dinner with my parents as well, but my husband didn't take it well. He told me, You should not be so attached to your parents when you married me. So my dreams stayed unfulfilled. I secretly sent flowers to my parents without my husband noticing. My parents are just happy that their daughter is well taken care of. They tell me not to worry about them. Whenever I call my parents, I make sure my husband doesn't see me. I feel that I'm putting a burden on my parents. When I apologize for the inconvenience, they say, Don't worry about it. That's the way it is when you get married. But my parents are old. I would like to show my appreciation in some way. But it is not going as smoothly as I wish. Well, my husband left me alone and traveled to Japan for the second time. I later learned that during the first trip, a local tour guide introduced a real estate agent to my husband and his parents, who were excited about Japan and wanted to live there. My husband got carried away. He told them that he had a lot of money in savings and retirement. I feel that he might have been a sucker. So the real estate agent and the tour guide took them for a ride. I think he was preparing to buy a property by opening a bank account at the local bank during the trip. Once he was ready, he returned to Japan and transferred the funds from the brokerage firm. I wish he had consulted me at that stage even if it was just for a few words. It's a matter of hindsight, isn't it? Two days after he left for Japan for the second time, I received a call from my husband. I didn't think it was a good call from my husband, who left with such an attitude. I answered the phone bluskily. What? What with your voice? Are you mad at me? Of course I am. What do you want? I'm at work. I need you to transfer some money to the account I'm about to give you. I need 100k urgently. What? 100k? What even is this bank? It's a Japanese bank. The broker's commission for buying the villa was higher than I expected. I was completely overwhelmed by all of this information. I couldn't think of anything else to say. I wonder if elderly people who get scammed by bank transfer scams are like this. At any rate, I thought he might not be able to come home without the money. So I decided to do as my husband said. I tried to follow the procedure as my husband told me, but when I saw the balance in my savings account, my eyes went completely black. Wait a minute, what? Why? The one million that I had worked so hard to save had been wiped out. Now it was showing almost zero balance. I checked my account history. And found that all my mutual funds and stocks had been sold. The funds had been transferred to the Japanese bank where I was about to deposit the money. Was my husband temporarily returned to Japan for this procedure? Without consulting me, I will never forgive him for this. They were about to successfully purchase real estate with the money I deposited. My husband returned home with great satisfaction. I urged him to sit on the sofa. What's this Japanese villa? What did you do with the money we saved together? I asked, holding back the urge to yell at him. My husband seemed completely oblivious to my anger. He was still in a good mood. Think of all the fun we will have when we get old 
and can go to Japan anytime we want, huh? You have something to look forward to, don't you? Let's go together next time. What are you talking so carefree about? Why do you think I'm just going to? I was so confused about what to say that tears just started to well up. I'm sorry, it was selfish of me. But why don't you go with me when you retire? We can live over there if you want. No matter what I blame them for, there was nothing I can do about the money that was gone and the real estate that remained. Why am I going through this? Every time I thought about it, I felt depressed, and I was getting more and more depressed day by day. I decided to break it off as much as I could so that I would not have to go on like this. After that, my husband started going to Japan once every two months. I thought maybe he was having an affair, so I looked into it. Apparently, he goes with his parents every time. The first summer after purchasing the vacation home is approaching. I want to take my parents to Japan for a long vacation. We want to go see the villa. I asked him. What? You want to go with your parents? Japan doesn't suit country people. Me and my parents are going on a long vacation, so we don't have a room in the first place. Since you spent my money, I have the right to use the villa, don't I? What do you mean, my money? Your parents are strangers to my family by blood. That's why I won't let you take them there, and why I won't let you use it. By blood? What are you talking about? Well, I'm not connected to your parents by blood either. Does that mean I can't go? I guess that's what it means. I see, so that's how you thought of it. So my parents and I are strangers to you. That's an obvious fact. How could he say such a terrible thing with a goofy smile on his face? My body was shaking with anger. I don't care what happens to you. What? Try to do whatever you want. I don't care. You said it. I will do it. Just watch me. I immediately applied for a paid leave of absence while my husband was in Japan. I sold my and my husband's cars. Packed up our belongings and left home. Since both cars were in my name, I could easily get rid of them. But since the house was in my husband's name, there was nothing I could do. So I changed the locks on the house. Now my husband cannot enter the house after he returns from Japan. As I expected, I received a phone call from my husband. Hey Olivia, where are you right now? I can't unlock the door. Let me in. No, it's not broken. I changed the locks. I have all the new keys, and I'm never going back there again. After spending our money all over the place, I'm divorcing you who said that we were strangers, since we are not connected by blood. What? Wait a minute. I don't understand. Just as I planned, he's confused. This is what you get. It makes me laugh. I'll be contacting you through my lawyer. Don't try to call my personal phone. Goodbye. I hang up the phone, and my husband tried to call me repeatedly, but I ignored him. He couldn't get into the house and had nowhere to go, so he ran to his parents' house. He is a small man to go back to his parents' house at the time like this, instead of going to a hotel or something. This time, my in laws started calling me, but of course I ignored it. They were too persistent, so I turned off my phone. Later, the lawyer I hired contacted my husband. The content was a declaration of intent to divorce and a request for alimony. The main reason for the divorce was that he had spent most of the $1 million, which was the couple's joint property, without permission. My desired terms are the remaining deposit and the money from the disposal of the house be mine, and alimony is paid to me. My husband did not accept these terms, and we had to go through divorce mediation. Naturally, the mediators were on my side because of the expensive amount of money spent. As a result of the mediation, my husband accepted the divorce and alimony payment. In fact, 
My husband has reached retirement age, but he is not yet old enough to receive a pension. He did not even apply for an advance. He was caught off guard because I was still working while his own income had ceased to come in. Did he let his guard down? Or did the fact he had a retirement allowance and a deposit make him too big and too foolish? He had planned to take it easy until the year he received his pension. This was after he had turned down all offers of new employment from his workplace. He lost his savings, his house, and my husband's own possessions were zero. With no job and no income, my husband had to pay alimony to me. My husband seems to have become mentally unstable. He is treated as a burden by his parents, even though they readily accepted his hospitality when he took them out for meals or to Japan. I think it is terrible that they treat him like a burden. But I guess it is like childlike parent. The problem is the Japanese villa, though. According to the lawyer, there are quite a few monthly maintenance fees. It has a large floor plan and a shared pool. They need almost $50,000 a month in maintenance fees. Nowadays, the villa is a vacation home that we cannot afford to go. To pay for the upkeep, my 60 year old husband works day and night at the factory job. Even if he wanted to give up the villa, it would cost a lot of money to go there and to set up an intermediary. It cost a lot of money, so there seems to be no way to get out of it. The debt seems to be mounting little by little. They are getting to the point where they are going to have to let go of the in law's house soon. They deserve it, don't they? As for me, most of the money I've saved so far was spent, but to tell the truth, when I had reached my goal of $1 million, I lost sight of some of my goals. I am 8 years younger than my husband and still have a job. Since I divorced my husband and now live alone, my living expenses are much lower and I have more money to invest. I am looking forward to seeing how much I can increase from my current balance to retirement age, combined with the money from the sale of my home. I am going to try my best to buy a small house in Hawaii when I retire. My parents have never been able to travel much because of the farm, and I want them to spend their retirement in Hawaii. I thought they would be happy if I let them spend their retirement in Hawaii. I am now looking into properties. I have been working all my life, so I would be happy to spend the second half of my life with my parents and me alone.